Hello noble ones and welcome to Metatron's Academy. Today we're doing something a little different for this episode in the sense that rather than focusing on a modern language or a language that is currently spoken as a first language in a different country, uh, we are actually going to focus on church Latin or ecclesiastical Latin and since it's one of the official languages of the Holy See and it is also a language that basically all Italian, most Italians study at school, how much can I understand as a native Italian speaker when I listen to fluently spoken ecclesiastical Latin? Now, of course, before we jump into the videos, I've got three videos to check with you today. I'd like to underline the fact that I am trained in Latin. So as I often do in, this, in these cases, I need to be sort of realistic or honest in the sense that I need to be able to tell you, yeah, I understood this one because of my training or I understood this one just because it sounds like Italian. So I'm just gonna sort of try to remove anything I know from Latin, start from a blank slate and try to see, yeah, but how much would I have actually understood coming just from the fact that I speak Italian? Let's jump right into it. I'd like to begin from a video by Polymethy, my friend Luke Ranieri. He actually went to the Vatican and specifically had this experience with the Vatican radio where there is this priest speaking fluently and he's one of the best speakers of ecclesiastical Latin. And it's interesting because Luke normally uses classical Latin but he can switch to ecclesiastical when needed and that's what he did for this video. Let's go. Nu per invitatu saput programma stadionis radioponicae vaticanae, cui titulus est Animal Latina, cum reverendissimo Valdemaro Turek Latine Locutusum in undis. Quam vi saput adium canalem, polimati, partes nostri colloqui auditae sint, hic integrae confabulationes auscultantur, eccas. Turek, no, no. Certe, quid invenisti ipsum, magister. I love, I love Luke Ranieri, he's a fantastic Latin speaker. So in this case, it's actually a little unusual because normally uh, Luke Ranieri, what he does is that he uses classical Latin, but in this case, he's at the uh, Vatican radio. And of course, he's switching to ecclesiastical Latin, which I'm not used to he hear him use. He has in a few of his videos, I'll link the video description, but it's still a little amusing for me. He's doing a great job. It's just a little amusing because normally I associate Luke Ranieri with classical Latin. Still, how much could I understand? Well, first and foremost, you will have recognized some of these words uh, such as like uh, channel, radio. Uh, these words of course they're modern words so some people might say yeah but is that actual Latin and my answer to that is yes of course it's not classical Latin of course it's not medieval Latin but Latin is not a language that isn't spoken. Latin is not a language that stopped evolving and therefore just like any other language uh, you can absolutely create neologisms in the sense that you can create new words to accommodate modern concepts within the Latin language particularly when used uh, this way in a modern context. He's not reciting a medieval passage. Anyways, how much could I have understood? Not much. I have to be honest, just from Italian, I know what he's saying, but just from an Italian perspective, not much. Apart from the words that actually sound uh, like, you know, for, for the, the modern words, absolutely, yeah, those are all understandable. Let's continue though. Let's listen to the priest as well. Oh, and before I continue, of course, the word magister uh, or magister, uh, that's, that's fine. That's easy to, uh, to recognize, maestro, magister. Uh, it's, but it's also a very famous word. Let's continue. Putas de, um, de acre. Locunturne et siam nunc sacerdotes vaticani latine. Paucissimi. Sacerdote vaticani is a, a priest from the Vatican. Yeah, that one is close enough for an Italian to understand. Let's see his reply. Sun sacerdotes in civitate vaticana que vi locuntur latine. Forse ita sin civitate vaticana within a Vatican city, within Vatican city, I think he said. So I believe this part not too difficult. Let's continue. Forse tan multi frequentaverunt curricula et studia in varis nationibus. And I think he's now speaking about the fact that uh, priests do study uh, Vatican uh, within their curriculum of, of studies in several nations. So this part I'm actually understanding. So it really depends. As I say, it's, it really depends. Nationis sounds like nazioni. And obviously, I'd like to underline that ecclesiastical Latin is going to be a lot easier to understand for Italians than classical Latin, because, for instance, the T is pronounced like a, a, a Z, tz, which is how it actually eventually evolved into Italian pronunciation. So ecclesiastical Latin is an Italianate pronunciation. In other words, when you want to learn how to speak ecclesiastical Latin, you just have to pronounce it 
according to Italian or modern Italian pronunciation rules. So ecclesiastical Latin is uh, going to be a lot easier for an Italian to understand than classical. Let's go. Amen. Odie pochissimi sunt illi, qui qui post sunt loqui de omnibus rebus et qui bus da malius si cut dicitur. Forse da non est plus nobis ista praxis da traditio usquat concilium Vaticanum secundum. I believe he's saying that it's not a practice. The idea of being able to speak uh, Latin fluently within the church is not, in fact, a tradition that keeps going probably from the Second uh, Vatican uh, Council. I believe that's what he's saying, but it's difficult. Uh, it's not something that, you know, oh, I'm Italian, I understand everything they say in Latin. No, there are sentences that I can understand 100% because they basically sound a lot like Italian. But then there are, you have to also understand the fact that Latin is a much more complex um, language from, you know, its syntax, from a grammatical standpoint, for, for its cases. And therefore, there will be situations in which it becomes so intricate that it, yeah, I get lost in, in my ability to understand it. Fere omnes sacerdotes et ecclesiastici loquebantur latine postea transierunt multe mutationes et odie et siam in seminaris non sunt quedam curricula tamen agitur non de facultate loquendis et de facultate exempli gratia legendi pronunciati. I love exempli gratia legendi. Et potissimum, et potissimum de intelligenti tec... Okay, so how much could I understand of this whole big part? I can get the gist of it. Let's put it this way. For example, he's basically saying the way I understand it, because again, they are talking about whether modern Catholic priests are required in a way, uh, how much they actually speak Latin. And I think the way he's explaining is that things have changed because he said mutationem, which means mutated, changed. And also uh, right now it's not really a matter of priests need to be able to speak it, but it's mostly priests need to be able to read it, understand the written Latin word, and also maybe priests could understand it if it's spoken to them. I believe he said that, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure about it. But in general, I think he's saying that priests today are not necessarily required to speak it as much, but probably that's what I'm gathering from this. Would I have gathered as much without any training whatsoever in Latin, just as an Italian speaker? Well, definitely I would have lost uh, some of the things that I've gathered. So, once again, as an Italian, it's easier to recognize the pronunciation of words that sound similar to, to Italian because of the fact that it's an Italian pronunciation, but don't expect, just because you're Italian, that you can just turn on a radio from the Vatican, everything is in Latin, and you'll know what they are saying because you won't. You'll just pick up a few ideas, you'll have an idea of the overall context and the topic, but that's about it. Go check out, link in the description, as I always put all the links and credits to the original creators. Absolutely go check out this video and look, Ranieri has many more videos that are great when it comes to Latin. Now we're gonna listen to Pope Francis speaking Latin. You'll see why. Ut eminentissimo Domino Angelo, Sante Romane Ecclesie, Cardinale Amato, Acepimus, Omnia que opus sunt, Ut beati Ioannes vicesimus tertius, et Ioannis Paulus secundus. So, so far, uh, the reason why I'm choosing to listen to the Pope right now is because he presents a very different, and once again, a third approach to ecclesiastical Latin pronunciation. So the first approach we listened to was Luke Ranieri. He's an American speaker, fluent in Italian, exceptional speaker of Latin that comes from a specific language family. Again, his pronunciation is really good, like one of the best I've heard from an Anglophone. But then again, we listen to the priest right next to him who comes and adds an Italian flair to it. And that actually made it even easier for me to understand as an Italian. So ecclesiastical Latin spoken with a little bit of addition of Italian flair. And I'd like to say modern Italian because uh, the way the priest speaks wouldn't... Some of the things he says are great for ecclesiastical Latin, they wouldn't really work well for classical. But in, in ecclesiastical Latin, they... Because they're too modern, I mean. But those make it easier for me to understand. When we go to Pope Francis, who is Argentinian from, I believe, Buenos Aires, and he is bringing to the table, once again, a different pronunciation, because you can tell that some of his vowels, some of his consonant clusters, sound like 
the way a Spanish speaker, specific of his variety, uh, would pronounce Latin with. So is it still ecclesiastical Latin? Obviously, it's the Pope we're talking about. But believe it or not, it is a little, just a, a tiny bit harder for me to understand occasionally because I need to get used to the way he pronounces it because ecclesiastical Latin is already a difficult task. So anything I can do to make it easier, I'll take it. And definitely listening to an Italian who speaks it is the easiest way for me to try and gather exactly what they are saying. Now, in this case, once again, nouns, yes, he said angels, he spoke about the popes, like John Paul, and, and he mentioned two popes, and then he said a few other words that I absolutely recognized. But if you asked me, just as an Italian with no training, can you tell me exactly what he's saying? No. Let's continue. In Sanctorum numero Cense antur feliciter sunt expleta. Sedet vos, venerabiles frates, ante quam o... Oh. Case in point. Did you hear how he pronounced that section? Yeah, that made it a little difficult for me to recognize. Un consistorium celebraretur, iam per literas mentem vestram singuli aperuisti, et declaratis ipso beatus, attentis presertim, Nostrum tempus maiuntis, tanquam vite Christiane et santitatis exemplaria universum. Great, so now finally we reached a point where I understood the whole sentence, vite Christiane, Christian lives. So we have a very similar situation to what happened with the priest a second ago. Sentences, some sentences I understand entirely, other sentences I, have, I only pick nouns, other sentences I really have a tough time understanding exactly what he's saying. Okay, having done this, uh, how much can I understand from written Latin as an Italian is the last thing we're going to test. And to do so, we're going to go to Wikipedia, as always, and select Lingua Latina. Let's go. Scutum. I'm going to read it in ecclesiastical. Scutum. Scutum est armamentum latum quod braccio vel manu geritur, ut eo te gumento corpus ab armis protegatur. Okay, so out of this again, I understand in general terms what they're talking about, but believe it or not, I could understand Spanish, written Spanish, even written Romanian easier than this, if I have to come this from a zero perspective, like zero Latin training perspective. I still understand the gist of it and what they're talking about. Let's try and read a bit more. Simplicia linio facta sae pepellibus, tecta erant. No idea. Seb iam ab Homero narratur discutis ex aere confectis et ornatis celaturis artificiosis. Just a word here and there. Milites in primis nobiles per annos sibimorem fecerunt scuta sua imaginibus certis afficendi, velut draconis, oris gorgonei, aliorum monstrorum, sive hostes terrendi causa sive ut a commilitantibus conoserunt. Okay, so uh, yeah, I understood a little bit more of this last section, but it is difficult. Like it's talking about how soldiers and mostly uh, nobles for years, they had painted images on top of their shields representing dragons, representing uh, gorgons and other monsters. So yes, of course, I understand this part, but I don't understand everything. And uh, differently from what we've seen with other languages, I believe that in this case, because it isn't a, ma a matter of how it's pronounced, but it's more of a matter of how complex it becomes and how some words are different, uh, then whether it be spoken or whether it be written, my ability to understand stays the same, which I believe is fascinating because it's once again a different situation that we have encountered. But of course, let me know if you had different experience. If you're a native Italian speaker or you speak any other Romance language and maybe you can understand more or maybe you understand less than me, absolutely share your experience in the comments because at the end of the day, I just share my personal experience, but we can all learn and grow from one another. And as always, thank you so much for joining Metatron's Academy.